I'm going to give you a quick tutorial of Magnify's Notebook Server, which is a JupyterLab environment letting you perform data analysis and consuming the Magnify API without having to install anything on your own computer. I'm here on the Magnify website looking at the detail page for a study. The main way into Magnify's Notebook Server is via the programmatic access box that you'll find in various places around the Magnify website. We've got an API URL here, which is the endpoint from which you can consume JSON data. But what we're going to be looking at is using the Open Study in R or Open Study in Python buttons, which jump us into uh, the notebook environment. I'm more familiar with Python, so I'm going to go ahead and press the Open Study in Python button. Those links are deep links into the JupyterLab environment. JupyterLab is arranged around Jupyter Notebooks, which are like interactive code documents. You can have instructions and descriptions, as well as cells of code that you can run. We've pre-installed this server with Python and R and some commonly used data analysis packages. And it's preloaded with example notebooks like this one. Because I followed a link for a specific study, when I run this first code cell, the notebook knows that I'm looking for a particular study with the accession or ID of 5989. We can run cells of these notebooks by clicking into them or selecting them with the keyboard and pressing Shift Enter or the play icon in the toolbar. When you run a code cell, it runs just one cell at a time. So these couple of lines of code here and then moves to the next cell. It doesn't run it. So to move through it, you can just move from cell to cell and then run each one in turn to follow a workflow. All of the example notebooks are designed to be able to run without you having to change any code, but you can go ahead and change things as you like because you're working on a copy of the notebooks that is launched just while you're using it. In this example, we're reading in the accession using a special utility that says get variable from link or input. What that's doing is reading the deep link. So we came from the website, so we already know the MGYS accession we're looking for. We load that in. Then we're using some standard packages called JSON API Client and Pandas. The first of these helps us read JSON data from the Magnify API. And the second is Pandas, which is a standard data analysis library for Python. We've loaded into a variable called analysis, a table of the analyses for the study that we're interested in. We're calling the analyses.head method to just look at the top of that table. We can see it's just one row with a bunch of attributes around it, including things like the instrument platform, which was Illumina. Now you can go and carry on and do anything you like uh, involving data analysis in Python. I've got another example here, which is included in this example notebook of using matplotlib, which is a graphics package, to make a little pie chart of the instrument types used. In this case, there's only one, so it's a big blue circle. Now, JupyterLab itself is as if you had some software installed on your own computer. So there's a launcher where you can open new Python notebooks, new R notebooks, if you prefer that, or Julia. There's a file browser on the left, so you can jump between different example notebooks. There's also a home page for these notebooks, which has a bit of information about how to use the resource, a kind of mini help section, as well as a contents with the different examples that are available. If you're a user of R, we've got examples in that as well. And some of these examples are built using Magnify R, which is a package by Ben Allen that makes it easier to consume the Magnify API into R. It uses some R familiar libraries like PhiloSeq, and it exposes a few methods for doing cross-study analysis, which is what this other notebook is showing here. 